Could ether be better? No, because um, ether is is much more complicated. It's much less mature. It is uh, it is not um, it's not a trillion dollar monetary network that's purpose built to be a store of value. Ether is is attempted to be many other things, including the world computer and a smart contract platform. And uh, it's going through a very rapid evolution uh, technical cycle. So as it goes from Ether 1.0 to Ether 2.0, the entire basis of the network is going to change from proof of work to proof of stake. That introduces a whole host of questions. And so it'll be three to five years, probably five years after the Ether 2.0 upgrade before you can evaluate what it is. If you're uh, a hard, a hardcore institutional investor, it's a different thing. I, th I think that if you want to characterize uh, crypto universe, you have one thing, Bitcoin, which is the dominant trillion dollar crypto asset network. It was, it's in essence, if God created gold in cyberspace, he would have created Bitcoin. It's uh, it's gold in cyberspace, but it's it's got none of the liabilities and defects of gold. It's uh, it's a uh, it's an encrypted block of sunlight. You can move it at the speed of light. You can program it with a million transactions a second. You can think you can use it as the base layer for the 21st century economy. It's completely transparent. Uh, you can't make any more of it. It's capped at 21 million. You can take delivery of a billion dollars of it in the palm of your hand or hold it in your head. Okay, so never in the history of the world did we have such a pure form of monetary energy. Well, once you understand it, you, you start with the observation that it's the most successful digital network in the history of the world. Okay, it went from zero to a trillion dollars in 12 years. Google took 22 years. Okay. You know, Amazon took 24 years. Apple took 42 years. Microsoft took 44 years. Right? So this is the most successful thing ever unleashed in the history of humanity from an economic point of view. So then the thought is, well, it seems like it's too good to be true. It's that good. Okay, well, you know, um, will it be banned? Will it be copied? Will it be hacked? That's the question. In right. 12 years, it's never been hacked. Right. It's been tried a gazillion times. No one managed to hack the underlying blockchain. It's the most secure database network on Earth ever invented, primarily because it is this decentralized network of uh, of SHA-256 ASIC miners. And I was just going to mention that. <laughs> it's like it's like the it's it's billions and billions of dollars of hardware. And the only use of the hardware is to secure the network. So it just it just can't be attacked in, in a conventional way. You would have to spend four years and $20 billion to attack the tip of it. And there's hundreds of millions of people that know you're not going to keep that secret for more than a few seconds before the community attacks back. Did the NSA or an offshoot from the NSA create Bitcoin? You know, I think it was created by um, by one or more of a group of engineers uh, that were very adept in encryption. Are you one of them, Michael? <laughs> I, you know, no, I'm not. Okay, I'll I'm, believe you. You know, uh, and we don't even want to know who it was, but I, I don't think they're here anymore. I think they're long gone. Uh, long I gone think as if the government got rid of them or they're dead? I just think they disappeared exit stage left for okay. the good of the world. Um, and so it's clear that uh, it was founded by people that were very deeply steeped in encryption technology and and computer technology, but also in Austrian economics, right? And um, and it was it's, it's a masterpiece of monetary engineering. It's not the first try. People tried many, many times before, and certainly they tried to clone it thousands of times afterwards. It's simply the most successful crypto asset network in the history of the world. And it filled a niche. The niche is uh, as, a, as a store of monetary energy, a store of value to replace gold. So, uh, I, you know, I think 
we just got to come back to this issue of will it be cloned? Will it be hacked? Will it be banned? It, it's not going to be hacked. It hasn't been hacked. Will it be cloned? People cloned it a thousands of times and they all failed because once every once a trillion dollars worth of money decides that it's going to put all of its money in this bank and cyberspace, they don't need the number two. It's like it's like there's a Facebook, there's a Google, there's an there's an Apple. It's a path dependent thing. Everybody's decided a trillion dollars of money and hundred million plus people. They've decided that Bitcoin is the bank in cyberspace. Once you've adopted that one protocol, then it has a trillion dollars worth of energy behind it. And then as for the banning, you know, well, look, it's property. And in the Western world, in Western Europe and the United States, they allow you to own property. So it's a choice between Bitcoin and silver or Bitcoin and gold or Bitcoin and, and ETFs or Bitcoin and other property. And it, it is and it will be wrapped in AML KYC regulations, just like other properties you can buy. Uh, and that's what makes institutions comfortable owning large sums of it. But it won't be banned in the Western world because we have a tradition of respecting property rights. And it's already been normalized as property by the IRS, the SEC, the OCC, the CFTC, and, and other related agencies. I think that's really a, a critical thing. Some people will say, well, I, I heard it's, it's, it's banned in China or something. Well, actually, I'm not sure it's banned. It's, it's hard to buy it. But, but uh, in certain countries like China, China doesn't want you to get onto Google. That's banned. Facebook banned. Twitter's banned. But that doesn't make Facebook, Twitter, or Google bad investments. So I, I wouldn't make my decisions based upon uh, decisions that take place in China or India or Nigeria. I'd make my decisions based upon uh, upon the, the prevailing view of the regulators and the society in the Western world. And I think that's come down very hard on, on one point. Bitcoin is property. Bitcoin is not currency. It is not a medium of exchange. The, uh, the, the medium of exchange function is sitting with the fiat currencies, the euro and the dollar. The store of value function is migrated into property like gold, S&P SP 500 index, real estate, uh, and Bitcoin and other sorts of things you can own. And I think that's a very stable, logical uh, development for the society.